Uh, okay, so I'm going to be quick today, um, and this is available online, so that was a big goal in putting this all together, was to just make it generally available that people can look at. Uh, I'm going to be talking about the life of a method, from parse time to runtime. And Jeff promised me that he would heckle, and so, uh, wait, where did he go? I was going to direct all the questions to him, so. Um, wait, wait, what? That's like the very end of it. OK. Yeah? OK. So the sources for this are actually Jeff's talk from last year, the Julian Manual source code. That's kind of where I've uh, gleaned stuff from. Um, so we talk about parse time, compile time, runtime. Uh, parse time is when you actually evaluate a function definition, uh, whether it's you know with function, this is the name, types, body of the end um, or the kind of single line syntax. And then compile time happens when you actually call the method. Uh, and then runtime, you know, happens when it runs. So we start off with raw source code. So here's a simple function definition. We're doing a cool for loop with, with a SIMD, you know, a couple of macros in there. Um, what happens first in the entire scheme of things um, is macro expansion. So we can actually zoom in and we have a tool to look at what happens when you know we have a macro and you know we we expand that so we can actually see that when we put the inbounds you know uh, macro there it's actually splitting out to the expression where you know we have this bounds check false uh, and then it puts it back on you know at the end of the expression um, next up is lowering and we can actually view um, the output of lowering from the code lowered um, either the macro or the function um, and lowering basically involves taking uh, the you know raw source code with the macros expanded, and we kind of do this flattening of everything. So you can see that there's pretty much one column here coming down. Everything's labeled you know as kind of a program counter. So this is very compiler friendly. Um, you'll also notice that there's a lot of desugaring that goes on, right? So you'll see up here near the top there's colon one length vec. That was in the source code one colon length vec. Um, so that actually gets desugared um, into an actual function call. So this is useful. We can actually see kind of, you know, from source code down to when our when it's actually lowered. Next up is when the method is actually called. Okay. So once it's done being lowered, it actually gets registered in a method cache, and then when we actually call the method with the types and values, as, as you know, Jake's talk mentioned earlier, we're going to go through this process of type inference, where inlining happens as well as generated functions you know, get expanded. And we can see the output of this process, right? So uh, with the code typed macro, as well as the code warn type, uh, code underscore warn type, um, we can actually see you know, what are all the types that got inferred? And we can see any inlining that happened, right? So, you know, we can see up, up again there at the top, instead of having, you know, uh, you know, colon one length vec, it actually, you know, got expanded and, and there was some inlining there that happened where, um, you know, we're getting the length of the vector and then we're setting it to it and then, you know, we're going through the four iteration um, loop there. So. This is the output. Um, this is, you know, generally very useful because we can actually see like what types are going on. Is there any types instability in my program here that would be causing uh, performance problems? And then we have LLVM compilation, and we can see the output of that by looking at the code LLVM macro, um, and we can see that, um, you know, indeed we are getting this vectorization going on. You know, we can see the vector body and the middle block and see that it's operating on four you know, values at a time here. So that's good. We can check the output of, you know, our SIMD macro that we wanted to get. Um, and then we do native compilation. We can see how the, the output of that with the code native, you know, macro or, or function. Uh, th that can be useful as well if you're so inclined to, you know, look at the assembly there. And then we have, you know, runtime where the code is actually executed. Um, so I wanted to just give a kind of 50,000 foot view of the start of a method till when it gets run, some of the tools that are there in between. Um, you know, the so what is a lot of what Jake uh, talked about today. 
With macros, we know we operate on symbols and expressions and return those. With generated functions, we're operating on types and returning expressions. Um, it's useful to move type operations that we could do at runtime into compile time. And then, um, you know, the big takeaway for all of us as users is, you know, you use the code inspection tools. Um, what other language provides, you know, this amount of insight into every stage of the process and, and being able to, you know, zoom in on, on what's going wrong here. Um, and then you can also reason better about the code. You know, am I doing things at runtime that I could possibly move further in the process, um, you know, at, at, at compile time or at parse time, okay? Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, cute kid text. Uh, I miss him a lot, so thank you. <laughs>